Alrighty, YouTubers. We have Queen Studios Hulkbuster in the house. We're going to go ahead and turn the light on, see this in all its glory, review it, and determine just how good is this statue. This is a highly praised statue, touted as one of the best. Is it Queen Studios' best statue? Uh, so we have it here. We have it next to Queen Hulk bust. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive deeper. But I did just want to show you here next to me, Flankster 117. I am six foot four, 255 pounds as of this morning. So let's go ahead and review this bad boy. So first off, everyone check out Gizmo. Gizmo, he is the cutest dog literally ever. Alrighty, just a sec. Check that out. So, let me start off with the cons first. Con one, it's too big and heavy that it's just not something you can ever move. You know, most statues you can move it by itself, but this is one that you can't. Like, you have to, like, definitely disassemble and have, like, someone help you. Like, ideally, remove both the arms, remove that and have another person help you move it because it simply is just so incredibly heavy like even just moving it a few inches to the left is so troublesome where you know pretty much every other statue in my collection outside of a few exceptions i can move pretty easy so sometimes having a bigger statue is just you, you want to make sure where you put it is where it's going to rest so it also does not go completely flush on the base I tried and tried, but I could not get this to go any lower. Now, I don't know if it's meant to be like this or if it truly can go a little bit lower. Now, granted, it was very cold outside, about 30, 40 degrees here in Utah. And who knows if it was sitting outside in the cold all night, maybe just the resin, you know, gizmo. Uh, so it's kind of hard to say, but as of right now, it does not sit totally flush. Uh, so that is, you know, it should sit flush in general, I will say. Uh, there is no light-ups in these arms. Uh, this and the regular arm, they should have done light-up in those hands. Even if it's a closed fist, I want that light-up. That one has a light-up in the closed fist. So Queen definitely should do that. I do give Queen props on doing battery, one battery, you know. However, I don't like the fact I have to remove this to turn it on. I should just, like, press a button and it turns the light on. I think that is a miss. But I do like the fact they did batteries. AC adapter would have been too much of an issue. Batteries is fine. Just make it easier so you don't have to remove parts. You should never remove a part to turn a light up on. And I hope Queen Studios finally learns that lesson in future statues because a lot of their past statues have all been, you know, you have to remove a part to turn something on, which is extremely annoying. Another thing, they did not include screws with my COA, so I had to, you know, get my own screws. But here is the COA. If anyone wants to read that. Doesn't even have my edition size, which means they were, you know, no signature or nothing. So they just printed, you know, 600 of those. So I believe there was 660 of these made, if I recall. I'd have to look back in the box. I didn't look at the underbar to the base. So assembling this, it's definitely difficult, but it's mostly due to weight and size and just getting it pegged in. Not necessarily other things. Once you get that in, everything else was easy, although the arms were a little difficult to get in. I will say something like uh, Jetwing or Megatron is definitely far more difficult. Now, uh, so that's kind of all the cons, I'll say. Now, I haven't attempted to remove an arm to try the other one. I, I know it like kind of like locks into place. So I kind of feel like you're going to have to use a lot of force to remove it. So I may attempt it just so I can see what the other arm looks like, but I do like this jackhammer arm for several reasons. But that's kind of it on the cons, I will say. Now let's talk about the pros. This piece has crazy presence. It is so freaking big. I mean, look at it next to like a one-third, a giant bust. You know, like Hulk is a big bust. This thing has crazy good presence. You know, it's like... That's how tall I am. It's coming up to my height, basically. But it is still actually looking down, which I'm not a fan of looking down poses. Then again, that Hulkbuster technically is also looking down. Now, this is definitely overscaled. You know, in comparison of, like, that Hulkbuster, uh, you know, that one is a good 25, 30% smaller. They're definitely different color reds. This one's, like, a darker-toned red 
and the gold is actually kind of similar. Uh, that one has an AC adapter light, no battery. And that one's also blue where this one's white. So let's do check out all the light ups. So you have a giant, like almost arc reactor there. There's one here, but it's hard to see. Light up in this giant chest arc reactor, you know, which is a detailed arc reactor, light up in the eyes. And then this particular arm has a light up there. There also is light ups here in the legs. And I don't know if there's light up in the back. Tell me, I can't see this, but there might be. So yeah, the light up is definitely pretty freaking cool. And if we get like down low, you know, like check out that angle. You know, so this piece definitely has crazy good presence. Oh my goodness. Gizmo, you are the cutest little thing. Uh, but, you know, presence, 10 out of 10. Now, this piece is a very battle-damaged statue. You know, like, they did a really good job on this wear and tear. You know, the way they did the almost like burnt effect and the dirt effect is very well done. You know, there's lots of battle damage all throughout. You know, like, this looks really cool. Like, Hulk just punched him right there. You know, scratches here and there. Just, you know, like, this arm's super battle damaged as well. And I definitely love that. There's, like, different parts in the base. Obviously, this was, like, a previous arm, I believe, that Hulk Buster or some part of him he ripped out off of him. I feel like this was his arm. And then different parts on the base. But overall, you know, the battle damage is extremely well done. My other Hulk Buster is really not battle damaged at all. It's more of a clean, where this one is definitely very battle damaged, which I do like. I think it adds a lot, especially at a piece this size. The battle damage is extremely well done. You know, so I definitely like, you know, like the scratches, all this. It looks really cool for sure. Now, I didn't have any technical damage. Uh, you know, the, the only thing, like I said, it doesn't fit fully flush in the base, but that could be due to cold. I may try to wiggle it down a little bit tomorrow, let it rest for 24 hours. So you are technically supposed to wait. Yeah, he's a little howler. Uh, you are supposed to wait to setting up a statue once it's been in the cold. I'm just very impatient. So when it comes to the base, this base, like I said in my unboxing, it's absolutely massive. Now it is just like a rubble base. There is browns, grays, blacks. I am glad at least they added some like different parts to him that like, if you remember Hulkbuster was like tearing up his back and got, you know, tore his arm off. So there, I do like that, the inclusion of this and that and that, I think it does add quite a bit. Now, if you think about this actual scene choice in the Hulkbuster they chose, there's not a lot more they could do. I mean, it's in a city they're fighting, so it's not like they're going to do humans. I guess they could maybe do a car, but that'd be so big. So there's not a ton they could do. The only thing I would say is maybe throw, like, a sick-looking Avengers 2 underbase. Gizmo, stop. But the base is better than that Hulkbuster. So this Hulkbuster, you know, is like a weird-looking rock base. You know, like, check out this one. So let me turn the light up on. Okay. So check this one out. Yeah, like I said, he has light ups in his fists. And then also his legs. You know, and this one does have a little bit of scuffs here and there. Not nearly as much. It does have scuff marks, but not really, like, true dents and whatnot. Check out the legs. You know, I noticed on the Queen Hulkbuster, this part is black. And here it's silver. Now, I still really like this Hulkbuster. I think it's excellent. But obviously, Queen's is better. All right, turn that light off. So, I mean, this one's very good, but obviously, Queen's is much bigger, much more of a statement piece. Yeah, like I said, this is black on Queen's. Yeah, like some of the parts that are silver on that one is all black. Like this is uh, black when it's silver on my other one. This has black, where on the other one, it's all gold. I'm going to assume that Queens is probably more movie accurate. Now, I'm going to watch the movie later and see. 
Yeah, so I, I'm pretty confident Queens is more accurate in terms of like the sculpt and paint. But again, I'm going to watch the movie later and pause it on a Hulkbuster scene. Maybe look at some images after this and determine which one's more, you know, like accurate in terms of color and everything. Yeah, like that one, you can see like the entire chest plate where this one, it is just so battle damaged. Now, I was speaking with my local buddy, and, you know, he owns a lot of high-end collectibles as well. And he agreed that this is definitely a huge statement piece, incredibly detailed, the best Hulkbuster out there, better than XM Hulkbuster, you know, and he owns that one and is a big fan. Uh, then we asked what's better, Shockwave or this, Shock uh, Jetwing or this. Now, I still think Shockwave and Jetwing is better. But I think this is up there with almost as good as them. I think some things that would make this, you know, better is obviously a better base. Like Shockwave and Jetwing have far better bases for me. But when it comes to like the actual piece itself, this is bigger than Shockwave and Jetwing in terms of just like raw body. But those ones have a lot more intricate parts to it. You know, like you look at the arm, like those are hundreds, almost thousands of pieces where this isn't quite as many pieces. So I think that's one thing that I do love about that. Let's turn off the light up because obviously you're not going to be looking at the side. Now you do have to remove this piece. This is quite heavy. And then there's this switch right here. You know, so here it is not lit up. And then you have to return that. And it is a pretty strong magnet. So be careful when doing that. Gizmo. He's become a grim one right now, folks. He is no longer Gizmo. Yeah, so like that's the look without the light up, which is what you're going to be seeing most of the time, especially since you have to remove a part to turn the light up on. You can't connect it to like some AC adapter switch type thing like I've done with my other statues. Uh, so, yeah, it's definitely an absolutely incredible statue. It is so freaking big, which makes it super impressive. So, yeah, when it comes to overall concept, the pose... I mean, I do like the pose. I wish it was he was a little bit more upright, but I do like the pose overall. I think it looks really good. And it looks really good up high. This is a piece that does require a lot of space. As you can see, it's taking up about 60% plus of this 48-inch wide garage shelf. And it is, you know, like I don't really have it hanging off a lot, but it is going all the way back there. I definitely feel like you could do something here in the base instead of just what it is right now. There could be something else. And then I really do wish it had like an underbase, like some sort of Avengers 2 underbase. Now, this is definitely an overscaled statue. It's not one fourth. That is more accurate to a one fourth statue. So if you wanted to pair this with a Hulk, you know, outside of like my Hulk bust, I think the only pair that would work would be the uh, Cinema Cat Hulk, the ECC. And that one's one third, and that one is huge. It's 32 inches tall. It's massive. Uh, but Hulkbuster is bigger than Hulk, so I don't know how good that scaling would be either. But I think that would pair better than if you were to like throw little Sideshow Hulk over here. It would look like a one six next to a one fourth. So this piece doesn't really scale good, because then again, they've also done like that whole Iron Man with Hulkbusters in, as the centerpiece. The problem with that is all the Iron Mans are also underscaled in comparison. You have this overscaled, that underscaled. So I don't think that necessarily works good, although it does look really cool in pictures, I will admit. But that's a lot of dough if you want to do that. Like, let's say I put Hulkbuster there and had all the Iron Mans surrounding them. I don't even think I could fit it all there, but that would definitely be super cool. So, I do want to try one thing, though. I'm going to move Hulk bust to the right and put my Mark 7 one fourth next to it and see how that looks. Alrighty, check that out. Now, that does look badass, I will say. Even though this is technically underscaled, it still actually is a big piece. I mean, it's like 28 or 29 inches tall. It's still big. It's just the actual body of Iron Man is too small. But that does look really good. And as you can see, the reds are kind of close. I know that it's technically supposed to be like the Mark... I don't even remember which Mark it is, but... The Avengers 2 Iron Man, but this does look good having the Mark 7 next to him. I'll probably leave it like this for now. 
especially since I don't want to leave the Mark 7 over by the Jandy. So I do like this look. I think this is really cool. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to fit another bust in this display. I can basically change that out to the Mark 7 bust and move Hulk bust back here. Or keep Hulk bust there. Or like I even potentially could plan, I could technically do Iron Man Mark 7 and uh, bust in one fourth underneath. And then you do Hulk bust above. There's a few different things, but yeah, overall, I do really like this Hulk Buster. I think it's extremely well done. Now, this cost me about $3,700 shipped. I think it was $550 to ship it or something like that. As you guys saw, you know, it's a freight shipping monster big container. Although, I feel like it, the box is basically the size of both my uh, Hulk Buster boxes for the Imaginary Marts. It's just that one's split in two. That one, the body is actually full as well, but it's a smaller body. And then it does also actually have two extra arms, or this one just has the one. Now, I did want to show you this arm, as well as a comparison next to my other Hulkbuster arm. All right, so this is both left arms of my two Hulkbusters. So as you can see, it really does look like a one six and a one fourth, or a one fourth and a one third, because there is a massive, massive size difference between these two. Uh, like, not even joking, it's so much bigger. But you can compare the different reds. They are semi-close, I guess. This one has the light on it. Gizmo, stop. You know, like, let's carry this. And this arm is actually very easy to remove. Yeah, it's definitely a different red. But as you can see, you know, like, even comparing, like, the gold... There's quite a big size difference between the two. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, so when you do insert the arm, it has this that kind of like locks it in. So you're gonna have to pull really hard to remove it to go ahead and, uh, you know, change out the arms. I'm trying to debate if I even wanna change it out or just keep this arm on, because I do like this arm for sure. It's unique and it has a light up. So, plus it makes it different than the other arm. So, what do you guys think? Hmm. Yeah, there's definitely differences between these two. Like, notice this is like black. That one, it's silver on the knuckles. The golds are very similar. But yeah, overall, I'm, I'm happy with the purchase. I think it's worth the money for sure. You know, when you consider that this Hulk Buster costs as much as like the Hulk Bust, and when you look at this, this is obviously a far better statue than that bust. You know, there's so much more to see. I mean, the thing with Silicon's, you're really just focused on the face. You know, everything else is kind of an afterthought. So that portrait's so important. Although the Infinity Bust, you're looking more at the whole thing. But like this Hulk Bust, I don't care too much about anything else outside of that. Like that's what I'm looking at. Where this, you can look at so many cool parts because it's kind of like a Transformer statue. There's so much to see. Uh, you know, it's you just be looking at this all day, kind of. So I really like that aspect of it. And the presence is definitely absolutely insane. It's a centerpiece for sure. I mean, look at that. Jupiter's freaking cock. Beast. Absolute beast. So I definitely do recommend this if you have the chance, if you have the money and space. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you're looking to purchase. Uh, I think Spec Fiction still may have this in stock. That's who I purchased this from. So big shout out to Spec. Uh, link in the description below if you guys want to you know, buy from his website. Uh, but he may still have some in stock if you guys are interested in buying some. But you don't need six people to assemble this, I will say. Seeing like the different Chinese YouTubers, you don't need six people. Uh, two people, heck, I probably could have did this totally by myself. I just had my friend angle the foot as it went down. I, I lifted everything by myself. Granted, I am a lot stronger than your average human. Anyways, folks, that's it for today's video. Let me know what you think of Queen Studios Hulkbuster. Did this live up to the hype? Uh, for me, it does, but it's still not quite as good as Shockwave or Jetwing in my opinion, but it's definitely like a top 10 statue in my collection for sure. That is it for today's video. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.